Hello. I'm Emily Weinberg, and I am honored to be introducing you to Julia Mincer. Julia Mincer works as both a singer and director across Europe, the UK, and the US. Last season, she made her UK debut as Carmen with Welsh National Opera and was nominated for an Off West End Award for Best Opera Production for her direction of Der Vampire with Gothic Opera. She has sung leading roles with Washington National Opera, the Dresden Simperoper, and the Glimmerglass Festival. Her recent roles include Elisabetta in Maria Stuarda, Carmen, and Preziosia in La Forza del Destino. Julia directed the first opera in London since the pandemic, Sabatri, for Hampstead Garden Opera, to wide critical acclaim, and has since directed productions while still in lockdown. She was a National Opera Association Stage Director Fellow and holds a Tier 1 Exceptional Talent Visa in the UK. Welcome, Julia. Thank you for being here. Okay, great. So I do have this all queued up and ready to go, and we'll get started.
Pocella e Carlo a morte domani gran Dio a morte andar vedrò singing Emily it's really great to hear you you've got you're really lined up the tone is really even all through the wide range in this piece and it sounds like the top is no problem for you and I appreciate also the focus that you kept throughout this whole thing this piece has three very distinct moves the that between the A the B and the C section so it's very challenging to keep a through line through all of that what I would love to do with the energy in those three sections is find something more specific particularly for the opening, the journey that she goes through before she has the realization that sends her into the closing. I'm getting that you're distressed. I'm understanding that. But what I'm missing, what I want to feel more of is the, is the panic behind it, the realization of the urgency and the struggle to find um, a reason and a meaning and and something to blame and something actionable in all of this that Emily is, is going through. Can you talk me briefly through what happens right before the aria that, that gets her to sing it? Uh, yes, I know that there is this huge conflict. Um, Carlo ends up getting injured somehow and she ends up blaming herself. And because uh, I know that, I believe it's in the second act. I'm blanking on which specific act it's in, but there is this huge trio between Eboli and Rodrigo and Carlo where, you know, they're in the garden and she believes that Carlo is in love with her uh, when he's, of course, in love with Elisabetta, which is a whole other complicated mess. <laughs> but um, she, she reveals herself as in love with him and he does not feel the same way and she's crushed. And so she's end up uh, ended up pining after him this entire time and she blames herself for his getting injured because she does have a hand in it. Mm -hmm. So she she takes it upon herself to um, to go and save him at the end of this. Yeah, she's she's got to save his life. Mm -hmm. So I want you to take a second to think about the reaction that you have in your body when you find out that you have caused great injury or possible death to someone that you love. That panic feeling, what does your heart do? Bump, 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 bump. What do I do? What do I do? What? So Verdi has put that in the orchestra for you leading up. And it takes how many iterations of that in the piano? I've got a score in front of me. Bump, 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 bump. It takes three iterations for her to calm down her heartbeat and for this frenetic feeling of the blood rushing to your face so that your face feels so hot and the, the sound in your ears, your blood in their ears is so loud that you can hardly hear. That's what that bum, 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 bum is at the beginning. So she's got to force those sounds inside her body that the orchestra is showing us to calm down enough even to get a few words out. Okay. Got you. That's, oh, this is why I love Verdi. Okay, excellent. Yeah, it's really good writing. Okay, fantastic. Uh, do you want me to start from the beginning? I'd love you to just start it again. Yeah, and I, I, want, it, I want to see you take some time and just summon up that feeling of the heat in the face and the roaring in the ears and the pounding of the heart and think how difficult it is across all of that drama just within your own body to articulate words, to figure out what you blame. 
because you can't even blame yourself, can you? You blame your beauty. It's not quite your fault. <laughs> so what kind of mental gymnastics has this woman gone through right here to exactly. get to say these words? Oh, yes. You've got to you've got to find something to grasp that isn't actually you. It's something the gods bestowed yeah. on you and that's their fault. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So your method to calm down that heartbeat and that roar is to find something to blame. Okay. I want you to take those few bars to calm down the orchestra so that you can speak. Okay. I can do that. This is, oh, that's so interesting. Um, it's not here, it's here. Yeah, what I'm what I'm Feel your is heart it's... pounding so violently it's gonna pop out of your chest and your breath running so jagged that you couldn't begin the aria if you tried. And take those bars of the introduction, do your damnedest to calm it down. You won't be able to. Okay. Um... How is it that you have, or, or what are the ways that you've found to, to go from a dead stop to that mode of panic? Because what I'm, what I'm noticing is that in general, it's been difficult for me to, to go from nothing to, oh my God, here we are, and then have to come down for that intro. Mm -hmm. So that second between when you step to the piano, nod, breathe and look back up to tell your pianist you're ready to start has got to contain an hour. Uh, okay. So you do all that work mentally. I, for myself, love to find a key image or a key word that I come back to that after I've done, I've written the story, I've written my character's biography, I, I've gone through her whole subtext there, something, some shorthand that can snap me into that. So after I think through that, with the luxury of time, I can then snap my way into that in a moment. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. I think that word in this moment would be panic. Yeah, I think that's what it is too. I think I think the the eighth notes are panic and I I think the arpeggio is her going <sighs> bum bum da 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 bum bum da 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 use the arpeggio to breathe it down. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's stop there. That's so different, Emily, already. That's such a different energy. And then what happens in this whole next sort of mini recit that Verity's written is that you, your vocal line is fighting the orchestra. The orchestra is your heartbeat and your panic mm -hmm. trying to take over. Right. And you finding words is taking its power away. So, so I want you to fight the orchestra down mm -hmm. through this whole recit. Yeah. Oh, okay. it can be really helpful to physicalize it in a big specific way when you're first finding a way to memorize that sensation. And I think the more times you do it, the more you'll be able to express it internally and with smaller and smaller motions. But for now, use them all. Use everything that you've got at your disposal. Great. Okay. Uh, would you like me to start right before that section or start at the beginning again? Yeah. I think you should start at the beginning. Okay. Yep. 
um, real quick, and not for the recording, Diana, um, but um, if we do need, um, I have marked my score with uh, different timestamps for the recording that I'm using for each section, so we can skip around. That's not going to be a problem. Okay, back on. <laughs> you again sure yeah that, that's already better i really feel that energy i would ask you you're shifting your focus around a lot yes what are you looking at um i haven't found a solid focus for that yet uh when i when i was toying with um kind of choreography for this piece i noticed that for the beginning I think there were two solid points. What I had settled on, I definitely didn't do this last time, um, but what I had settled on was kind of a, uh, a straight out for the, um, for the, I, I'm sorry, my Zoom distracted me. <laughs> uh, so uh, a straight out for the initial- That's all right, I, I just clicked the same thing away. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so for the initial, what I was kind of focusing on is the fact that this is, not speaking to myself it's not speaking to anyone in general it's speaking kind of out to the universe and then uh where was that mm -hmm. specific point um and that's definitely more towards i guess the gods but also directed a tiny bit towards me because even if they in my opinion bestowed my beauty on me I'm still the one who carried it and used mm -hmm. it for something that ended up hurting the person that I love. I think that's key. It's in you. It's, it's not on the gods. The thing that you're cursing is in you. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you just keep this really focused mm -hmm. or if your panic is trying to send you to different places, I challenge you as Emily, as Eboli to keep bringing it back. Mm -hmm. your, your goal as an actor in this is to keep it focused because your goal as a character as well is to keep it focused. Mm -hmm, I think there's space to get too uncomfortable in yourself to look at one place in the next section. Mm -hmm. But for now, what happens if we just keep it straight out as if you were looking, you're looking at your beauty in the mirror. Gotcha. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. And I'm... hating yourself for it. Okay, so it's more along the lines of she, of course, she knows that this is her fault, but she's trying to find something else to not have the blame on her. She can't escape that it's her fault. Got you. Okay. But it's her fault. That makes sense. Okay. So you're looking right at yourself in the mirror. And when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, there's nothing there but you to yell at. So she finds the one way out of that, which is to yell at her beauty. Mm -hmm. Okay. That does make sense. All right. Let's try that again. Yeah. <laughs>
that's okay that's okay um so that energy works so much better uh-huh. i i don't think it's necessary to go back but just as a director what i would recommend you do is keep the mirror right at eye level you are staring down that face in the mirror okay ferociously okay. yeah and then, and then in the second section you look away because you actually cannot stand to look at your own face anymore yes okay or, that does make total sense. so you're trying to just go somewhere anywhere and that read really well um that c flat that b it's a c flat mm-hmm. is the hardest because <laughs> it just comes out of nowhere mm-hmm. i i've done this a lot actually in, in concerts and what i love to do there is actually connect it and not take a breath but just give the illusion that I'm taking a breath. Oh, mia bell tongue. Ah. Oh, so the audience won't hear it. And honestly, the audition panel three feet away won't hear it. All it is, is giving yourself something tangible mm-hmm. to help you with that breath journey. So you're just gonna take an NG. So it keeps your tongue arched up nice and high. Oh, mia bell all the way up so that you don't have time to go to it. You don't have any leeway to go to a different space vocally than you just were in the G flat. Right. Do you want to try that? Just acapella. I don't think it's worth yes. finding the spot in the music just as an, as a, an exercise under tempo from Omiya okay. Delta. Thank you. One second. Ah, the advantage of doing this from home is I have tea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So that you're saying that's a slide, right? Yeah, or if an NG, maybe an NG isn't the right thing for you. Try them. Oh, mia belta, Go up on an oo and then open from the oo to the wa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, mia belta. Yeah, listen to that. <laughs> Now, just for the sake of experiment, can we play with vowels? Yes. Can we do, oh, mia bel So from ah, you're gonna go up on o, and then open to ah instead of the ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yes, this I can do. Oh, mia Yeah, <laughs> that was a good C flat. Yeah, that was very so interesting. I like that. The way you're going to practice that, it's just a way of making sure you stay connected so that in that split second between the G flat and the C flat, which is going to be the longest split second any mezzo ever experienced, you don't, you, you use your body to not give your brain the chance to derail you. Mm-hmm. So the way the way you practice this is just to make that slide quicker and quicker. Oh mia bella ta, oh mia bella ta, oh mia bella ta. And by the time you've done it enough times, it's only going to be mental that you have that slide up. Mm-hmm. But that's something on your own in the practice room. Um, let's go on from there so we can so we can practice some other things, and I'll let you play with that. That. Right. Okay. Uh, um, should we start the music again, the piano, and then you can come in on Omiya Regina? Yes, yes, I have that marked. So that will be playing. Unless you're dying to do that, the that section again. Up to you. Um, I actually feel really good about that section. Cool. I think it's going to be really easy for you to do it that way. Oh, 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 okay. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Um, yes, yes, I agree. Um, but that definitely makes that entire transition so much easier. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah. coming in at Omiya Regina, right? It'll sound like you've taken a breath. You just stop singing, but you don't actually reset anything. Yes. Okay, excellent. All right, uh, piano a little bit before. Oh, 
Okay, I'm gonna stop you again already. What? What, what does the or orchestra mean going in there? What is that bum bum the bum heartbeat. bum? So this is yeah. more, this is more even. Which and is... why is it so much slower than it was before? If we're, if we're talking in terms of anxiety, which is what has been the entire lead up up until this point. Sometimes, at least from, from experience, there has been this giant lead up and then there's a crash where it's no longer uh, your heart beating wildly, you're crying and there's a release of emotion. Yeah, it's a crash. I think crash is the key word. She's worn herself out shrieking. Mm -hmm. And she's collapsed. Mm -hmm. So let me see that that's just, you're collapsed. You're on the ground. You're just wailing at this Right, so point. Uh, out of curiosity, this is under the assumption that this is just for solo staging and of course not in an actual opera where I would be speaking. Yeah, to. I don't mean you should actually get on the ground ground but I think you can find a way in how you hold your chest how you hold your shoulders mm -hmm. okay. and where your focus goes to show us to show us that you've collapsed at that point right okay excellent uh do you mind if I started at the uh the piano lead up the giant triplets great great excellent. okay <laughs> I'm going to stop you. Why do you say it twice? Why is the second iteration different? I believe that's her making up her mind that she has to hide away from the world. The first is, um, how do I phrase this? I, to, to, to put it roughly, I feel like the first time through the Soluino in Chiostro uh, is, you know, kind of spitballing a way to punish herself. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, having solid, I've thought of this before. It's, oh my God, I have done something yeah. completely unforgivable. I have sold out my queen. Yeah. And the second time through is her making up her mind that this is in fact what she has to do to pay yeah. for what she's done. And there's redemption in that. So if the first time is mea maxima, mea maxima culpa, the second is, but I can be redeemed. Right. Okay, this is actionable. This is something I can do. In a convent, I can hide my grief. Mm -hmm. And there's there's definitely got to be a mental shift for that, which I did not incorporate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's really. It, um, do you have a? Let's. I want to see just that shift. What's the? What's the? Um, place that we can start that doesn't mean going all the way back to that section. Uh, okay, so we are here. Uh, not to the beginning of Omi Regina, right? Um, if we can help it. Is there anywhere we can go a little later? Yes. If not, let's then let's start it at Figure One at Omi Regina. Let's just start there. 
Regina. No, I, I'm in the middle of it. Sorry. Oh. Um, let's let's just start okay. at the beginning of that one. <laughs> okay. Just for fun. That transition works really well. Now it, it really feels like it has a shape. Mm -hmm. um, we're running out of time, so I don't think we're gonna get to do the last section, okay. but a couple things to use there. Um, when you go up to the, oh, so you try the same approach. Uh, what I like to do, il mio dolore. Oh, even if it, I'm actually taking a breath, what I'm thinking is, so just practice it that way enough times if you do that 99 times on the 100th time your body's just going to remember that <laughs> and the same thing i love to sing um mondo ma do go up on an o or an u because i i think what um wants to catch you up there is the urge to open it quite wide yes. towards an a so i would recommend working that on o's and oos and getting up to that point on an o and an oo so that you're already in the right position we're gonna hear the real vowel just thinking of wrapping it all in a layer of oo mm -hmm. and practicing it without the breath enough times that you stay in that vowel mm -hmm. And then don't underestimate how much mileage you can get out of those doubles. Yo timolai, al folle oror. You can self-flagellate with that double L of folle. Mm -hmm. And when you do it, you're, I hear you doing your phrasal doublings on the D. Mm -hmm. Just be conscious to keep those nice and dental, the Ds so you're not getting splashy splashies. And the, and the Cs as well are, are a little bit wet um, to keep it closer to a G. Uh... I'm not sure what you mean on the C's. Uh, solo un chiostro, uh, chiostro, rather than chiostro. Gotcha, okay, less K. Yeah, yeah, not less K, just a little less um, chiostro. It should sound a little closer to a G. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. One, for the authenticity of diction, but two, when you do that very wet American t, you're actually losing breath. You're letting breath escape through the consonant being formed that way and the chords not closing all the way. So it will help you vocally as well. Gotcha, okay. But I think that dramatic shape is working really, really well for you. And then that last section, just you come right back to the to the panic. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da. E Carlo. Mm -hmm. So you can come right back to where you were at the beginning mm -hmm. and then 
this time you get the better of that orchestra. You get the better of that pounding heart, those roaring ears and your voice sails over the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Because it's in tandem with it as opposed to fighting against it. That makes total sense. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Verdi's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> Beautiful singing, Dan Emily. It was great to hear you. Thank you so much. And I loved working with you. Thank you for taking the time.